Hi everyone. Today a video on amines and specifically their reactions as nucleophiles and their use in synthesis. So as we saw in the previous video of this series, amines have a lone pair of electrons and this means they can act as nucleophiles. They can be electron pair donors and they will attack electron deficient carbon atoms that are acting as electrophiles, electron pair acceptors. Now, primary amines are prepared when halal alkanes are reacted with ammonia. And this happens in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. It follows the normal arrow pushing for nucleophilic substitution reactions. We have an arrow from our nucleophile, the lone pair of the NH3 in this case, going to the delta positive, the electron deficient carbon atom. Remember that our arrows always go from high electron density to low electron density. And then our carbon already has four bonds already. We have to break one of those bonds. We can't have a five valent carbon. And so the bond that breaks is the CX bond. So we have our, our arrow that starts in the middle of the CX bond where the electrons are, ending up on the electronegative X atom. So this then produces our, our, our second step here. This isn't the final product yet. Remember that every single step of our mechanism has to balance in terms of charge and in terms of atoms. We've started off with a neutral electrophile and neutral haloalkane. And so while we've kicked off our X as an X minus anion, we have to have a positive charge somewhere to make sure we're overall neutral. And that's on the nitrogen, because as we've bonded the NH3 to the carbon, the nitrogen now has four bonds. And so our second step is just to deprotonate this to make it into an NH2 group. So we have another molecule of ammonia that comes in. We have our arrow from the nucleophile bit of that, the lone pair, to the delta positive hydrogen atom. And then again, hydrogen can have one bond. We've already got the one bond, so we have to break the other bond. So we have an arrow from the NH bond starting in the middle and ending up on the electronegative nitrogen atom. We can't attack the positive charge directly on that nitrogen atom because it already has eight electrons, it's got four bonds. There's no uh, electron deficiency there. There's no empty orbitals. So we have to attack something bonded to it and then kick off a proton in this case. And so this then ends up producing our ethylamine, our primary amine, and also our ammonium salt, the NH4X. The problem with this, though, is that the primary amine that we produce, the ethylamine in this case, is already, uh, it also has a, um, a lone pair of electrons. It has a lone pair on the NH2 group. And as we saw on the previous video of this series, if we have alkyl groups attached to our amines, due to the inductive effect, this makes them better bases and also, by the same logic, better nucleophiles because alcohol groups tend to release their electrons, push their electrons away from themselves onto the nitrogen atom in this case, increasing the electron density on the nitrogen atom and making it a better nucleophile. So if there's any excess haloalkane, this primary amine is now a better nucleophile than the ammonia is and will react with that haloalkane. And this ends up producing a secondary amine, an amine with two carbon groups on. Now this logic is also the same for the secondary amine that we produce. This is a better nucleophile than the primary amine was because we have now two inductive effects, increasing that electron density on the nitrogen atom even further. So this will react with any excess haloalkane as well and produce a tertiary amine. And again, the same logic applies. The tertiary amine is a better nucleophile than the secondary amine was because there's now three positive inductive effects, uh, inductive effects, sorry. And so this will go on even further to produce a quaternary ammonium salt. This is a nitrogen where we have four R groups attached. And so it ends up being a salt. And you can see these reactions here at the, uh, at the bottom. So therefore, we end up producing not only the primary, uh, primary amine that we want, but also a secondary, a tertiary amine and quaternary ammonium salts. And so this isn't an efficient way of preparing amines. There's sort of little tricks we can do in order to help that along a bit. We could separate the products by fractional distillation, or we could use a really large excess of ammonia. By using the excess of ammonia, we're going to make sure that we've used up all of the haloalkane in that first step to make the ethylamine. So there's no haloalkane remaining for that ethylamine to, to react with. But generally, it's not a particularly good way of making amines. But the really key take home message really is that it's really important to balance these equations, make sure they're balanced and that we need two equivalents of amine or two equivalents of ammonia are needed. And the reason is that the first acts as a nucleophile, does the substitution, but 
the second acts as a, a base, removing a proton from that intermediate. So how can we make amines in a better way, not basically in a way that we're not going to get as many side products forming? Well, primary alkyl amines can be prepared from a halalkane, but in two steps rather than one. So the first step is another nucleophilic substitution reaction, but this time not using ammonia, but using a cyanide ion in aqueous ethanol. So the cyanide anion is our, our nucleophile. We have our haloalkane, in this case I denote it as Ri, and we do a simple nucleophilic substitution reaction like we saw on the previous slide, and this produces a nitrile. This is a, a RCN, where we have our C double bond N, that's a nitrile group. Now, the next step of that is that the nitrile group can be reduced down to a primary amine by a nickel and hydrogen catalyst. So remember that the reduction essentially is the addition of hydrogen. And so you can see the, the equation here is the RCN plus two dots of hydrogen, H2, and it ends up producing RCH2, NH2. So this gives a much purer product than doing the haloalkane plus ammonia. While this is a two-step reaction, it's a much purer reaction. And so we don't get lots of other side products forming. We only get the primary amine that we want. One thing to note is, of course, that if we're using the cyanide group, which we are here, that that contains a carbon atom in itself. And so the length of the chain increases by one in that first step. So if you want to make propylamine, you've got to make sure that you start from a haloalkane that has an ethyl chain, because we're going to add one carbon on in that first step. And a really key uh, mistake I see a lot of people making is to write down that reduction can happen with sodium borohydride, NaBH4. This is the reducing agent that you'll have seen is able to reduce uh, aldehydes and ketones down to alcohols. But the important thing is that nitriles can't be reduced by sodium borohydride. We have to use our nickel and hydrogen catalyst. The sodium borohydride really is only for aldehydes and ketones. If we want to make a phenol amine, then we can use some aromatic chemistry. And if you're not particularly happy with that, you can always go and view my videos on aromatic chemistry. But again, we can make it starting from benzene in two steps. So benzene is reacted with a one-to-one -one mixture of concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. This is our standard nitration reaction, our um, electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. And this produces nitrobenzene. And then the second step, much like when we make our Alkyl amine, the second step was a reduction. Here for the phenyl amine, the second step is also a reduction. So we reduce our nitrobenzene to phenyl amine, sometimes otherwise called alanine, and this time we use a tin and hydrochloric acid reducing agent. These essentially react together to form the hydrogen, which is the reducing agent. This reduces the nitrobenzene by removing the oxygen and replacing them with hydrogens. Now, since the reaction is carried out in uh, HCl, the salt is formed uh, and so sodium hydroxide like we saw in the previous video we formed the salt the salt is ionic and will be soluble but if we want to regenerate our insoluble amine we can add sodium hydroxide to uh, essentially take the proton away from that and end up producing the phenyl amine the insoluble amine Now, amines will also react not only in these kind of nucleophilic substitution reactions we've seen, but also in nucleophilic addition elimination reactions. So amines will react with um, things like acid chlorides and acid anhydrides, uh, and these will end up producing something called amides. So these look similar to amines, and they sound similar when you say them. The difference is that we have our carbonyl group, our CO double bonded group, also attached. So an amide functional group is the CO double bond connected to our nitrogen and then our R or H groups. So the mechanism for this, it's fairly simple. We take our, our nuclear file, which in this case I've drawn here a primary amine, one R group attached. We have our arrow starting from our nucleophilic part of that, the lone pair, and heading towards a region of electron deficiency. And the electron deficient region is the delta positive carbon atom. Now, again, the carbon here has four bonds already, so we have to break one of these bonds. And the weakest bond to actually break is the pi component of that CO double bond. So we draw an arrow starting from the CO double bond and ending up at the electronegative oxygen atom. So this produces something that we call our tetrahedral intermediate. Remember that charge has to balance again, so we started with a neutral nucleophile and a neutral uh, acid chloride. 
by having that arrow going from the CO bond to the oxygen, we now have a negative charge on the oxygen. Our electrons have moved onto the oxygen. And likewise, when the nitrogen is bonded to it, the nitrogen now has four bonds and so is positively charged. So overall, we're still neutral. So that first part of it was the nucleophilic addition. Now we need to have the elimination part of it. And so what we do is we take our arrow, starting from the negative charge, the nucleophilic part of this molecule, the negative charge on the oxygen. We're going to have an arrow going down and reforming that CO double bond, so ending in the middle of that CO single bond. And then now the, uh, the carbon sorry, has four bonds already, so we have to break another bond. And in this case, the bond we break is the CCL bond. And so an arrow going from the middle of the CCL bond, ending up on the electronegative chlorine. Again, like the nucleophilic substitution we saw earlier on, this isn't quite the end because the nitrogen is still positively charged. We've kicked off our Cl, Cl minus chloride anion. Our positive charge still remains on the nitrogen. And so we have to have the same thing happening. Another molecule of primary amine comes in and deprotonates it, removing a proton and then an arrow going back on to the electronegative nitrogen. Again, remember that we can't attack the nitrogen directly because it already has eight electrons. It doesn't have any electron deficiency. And so the overall reaction of this is that we've turned our, uh, our acid chloride reacting with an amine into an amide. And we've also ended up producing uh, an ionic salt as well. And this reaction is really useful because uh, amides uh, are very useful uh, in forming polymers such as, as nylon. Now, amines are also very important from an economic point of view as well. Um, as we said, they're in many, many synthetic materials such as nylon, they're also in polyurethane, dyes, and also lots of drugs. And the quaternary ammonium compounds that we saw earlier might not look particularly useful compared to the primary, secondary, and tertiary amines, but they are very useful. And they're used industrially in the manufacture of hair and fabric conditioners. And the reason for this is because we have our very, very long hydrocarbon chain, as you can see on the right, it's a very, very long non-polar chain. And then our nitrogen atom is an ionic part of that, it's positively charged. And so this is an ionic part of the group. Now, both wet fabric and wet hair pick up negative charges on the surface. And so the positive charge of that, that nitrogen attracts them to the wet surface and it forms a coating that prevents the buildup of static electricity. And so it keeps the fabric smooth and it prevents flyaway hair in hair conditioners. And so these are called cationic surfactants because in aqueous solution, what we'll end up seeing is we have our, our sort of the head of this, the, the, the nitrogen, the positively charged nitrogen being the ionic part of it. Being ionic, we say that it is hydrophilic. It likes water, it likes other polar things. And then we have a very, very long chain alkyl group, which is very non-polar. So we say that this is hydrophobic. It doesn't like the polar water. And if you put these into aqueous solution, you'll actually find that they form something called micelles. And a micelle essentially is like a little ball. It's a little cluster of these, um, of this cationic surfactant, where the hydrophilic head, the bit that likes the water, wants to be in the water, so it's on the outside. And then all of the tails kind of shield themselves inside. So you have the kind of outer sort of layer of the hydrophilic heads and all the hydrophobic tails are kind of buried inside away from the water. So both parts of that are really happy. So time to have a go at some questions. If you want to have a go at these, have a go and then pause the video um, and the answers will be on the next slide. But we have some sort of mechanistic questions here. So naming and outlining some, some mechanisms and some synthesis, explaining why butylamine is a stronger base than ammonia. Uh, and then another type of mechanism and synthesis. So pause the video and have a go. So the first question was to name and outline a mechanism for the formation of butylamine by the reaction of ammonia with one bromobutane. So this is this nucleophilic substitution reaction that we saw on the very first slide. And so if we draw our mechanism, we have our nucleophilic NH3 attacking the delta positive carbon, which is attached to our bromine. I've drawn this out here in, in skeletal formula, but you could have also drawn it out using sort of normal C's and H's. Uh, and then carbon already has the four bonds, so we have to break a bond, and it is the CBR bond that breaks. So an arrow from the CBR bond, the middle of that bond, ending up on the bromine. This kicks off our bromide ion, 
we have a positive charge on our nitrogen because we have four bonds to our nitrogen. And so remember that we have to have our second molecule of ammonia coming in and deprotonating that NH3 group. So an arrow from the uh, lone pair on the nitrogen atom to one of the delta positive hydrogens, and then an arrow from the NH bond to ending up on the nitrogen. And so this produces butylamine and also our ammonium bromide salt. The second part of it was to say that butylamine can also be prepared from a two-step synthesis, starting from one bromine propane. We need to write an equation for each of this. So this is where we need to use our cyanide anion, our much more, uh, our much purer way of making this primary amine. Of course, remember that in that first reaction, that nucleophilic substitution, there's always the risk that the butylamine will react with the haloalkane because it's a better nucleophile than the ammonia was because of the inductive effect. So our first step of this pure reaction is to take our um, one bromopropane, react it with HCN. This is our nucleophilic substitution reaction, so we replace the bromine with the CN and we end up forming HBr. That's our nitrile that we've formed. And then we take this, this nitrile, the butane nitrile, and we have to reduce that nitrile group down. Remember that we can't use sodium borohydride, we have to use hydrogen and nickel to do that. And by reducing that down, that ends up producing our butylamine. The next question was to explain why butylamine is a stronger base than ammonia, we've kind of alluded to already, because of this inductive effect of the alcohol groups wanting to release their electron density, push their electron density away from themselves, increasing the electron density on the nitrogen atom, and therefore making it a better nucleophile and a better base. And then finally, to draw a structure of a tertiary amine, which is an isomer of butylamine, remember that a tertiary amine has three carbon groups bonded to our nitrogen. And the easiest way that I think of doing this is to take uh, butylamine, which is a primary amine, very long, one long chain alcohol group, and just to split that chain up into three. And so by splitting that chain up into three, you're left with two CH3 groups and a C2CH3 group. So two methyl groups and an ethyl group. And then if we wanted to name this, Remember that we have to look for our longest chain. The longest chain is the ethyl part of it. And then we want to look uh, at the other substituents. We have two methyl groups. And so the name of this would be NN dimethyl ethyl amine. The second question was about an amine reacting with um, an acid chloride. Name and outline the mechanism. So this is our nucleophilic addition elimination reaction. So we take our amine, which we have our, our nucleophilic part of that, our lone pair on the NH2, draw the arrow from there to the delta positive carbon, the electron deficient carbon. Again, the carbon can only have four bonds. We have to break one. And we break the pi component of that CO bond. So an arrow from the middle of the CO bond ending up on the oxygen. Make sure the charge is balanced in the next step. So we have a negative charge on our oxygen because our electrons have moved onto it. And our nitrogen that bonded now has four bonds, so positively charged. I'm going to use the abbreviation R just to represent that long chain alkyl group just for simplicity. But the mechanism is exactly what we saw beforehand. The nucleophilic part is the negative charge on the oxygen. That comes down and reforms our CO double bond. And then again, carbon can only have four bonds, so we have to kick out the Cl group. So we have an arrow from the carbon chlorine bond, uh, starting in the middle, going to end up on the Cl. And this kicks it off as a, a chloride anion. But we still have the positive charge remaining on the nitrogen, so we need a second molecule of our primary amine to come in and deprotonate that, uh, that proton from the nitrogen to turn it into our neutral molecule. And so the name of this is n propyl ethanamide. Remember that we, when we name our amides, it's based on the carbon chain. The carbon chain is two carbons long, so that's an ethanamide. And then we have to name the alcohol group that comes off our nitrogen, and that's a three carbon length chain, so N-propyl ethanamide. Plus we have our ionic salt that we formed. Make sure everything balances up in terms of atoms. The second question was to um, draw a primary, secondary and tertiary isomer of those uh, of that amine. So the first one is just essentially a, a, the primary uh, amine is just a chain isomer essentially rather than having one sort of straight chain propyl group instead what we're going to do is make it into an isopropyl group. The secondary amine again I always think about just kind of chopping up that long chain that CH3, CH2, CH2 chain 
break it up. So if we want a secondary amine, we need two carbon groups. So take the CH3 off the end and put it onto the nitrogen. And so we end up with um, N-methyl ethyl amine. And then finally, the tertiary amine, we can just take three methyl groups. And so the methyl groups, in this case, we have uh, three methyl groups. And so this would be NNN trimethyl amine. Finally, we're then asked to outline a three-step synthesis uh, of CH3, CH2, NH2, so ethylamine, starting from methane. It says the first step should involve the formation of chloromethane. So the first thing we need to do is we need to form a halo alkane. Remember that we talked about these reactions, either reacting it with ammonia or reacting it with the cyanide ion, started from uh, a halo alkane. So we need to make our halo alkane. And one of the ways to do this is to start from methane and to react it with chlorine in the presence of UV light. This is our free radical halogenation, our free radical substitution reaction, and this produces uh, chloromethane and HCl. But of course, remember that this isn't a particularly fantastic way to make halo alkanes, but it will do for here. Then we simply follow the, the same kind of reactivity we saw before. So we take our halo alkane, we've got um, chloromethane here, we want to end up with an ethyl amine. And so we need to add on our cyanide group, increase our carbon chain. Typically, this is just done under reflux. And so this would then produce uh, uh, nitrile and sodium chloride salt. This is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And then finally, we take our uh, nitrile and we do the reduction. Again, remember, we can't use um, the sodium borohydride. Instead, we have to use nickel and hydrogen. And this ends up producing our uh, ethylamine through a reduction reaction. So thank you for watching. You can find many more videos like this on my YouTube channel. If you found this video helpful, then please consider leaving a review on one of the tuition websites. I offer tuition for chemistry online, so if you're interested in that, you can contact me on one of my tuition pages. And if you need any more help with your chemistry, always feel free to drop me an email. I'll be happy to help.